Ms. Aravinis Ocampo, a hospitality management instructor. Welcome to my class. So, for the part 2 of our discussion in the history of tourism and hospitality, now we are going to discuss about the pioneers in the tourism and hospitality industry. So, sino po ba yung mga tao or mga kilalang tao nung araw na nagsimula po ng uh, mga hotels nila, ng mga restaurants nila under tourism and hospitality? So, let's first begin with Cesar Ritz. So, as mentioned a while ago, isa siya sa mga kilala. Okay, na tao under hotel industry, he became the general manager of the Savoy Hotel in London. Okay, so yung kanya pong pangalan, which is yung um, apidido niya rather, na Ritz, is named or synonymous with the terms refined, elegant hotels and service. Okay, so siya po ang may-ari ng Ritz Carlton Hotels, okay, na matatagpuan po natin sa Paris and sa London as well. So we have also Ellsworth Milton Statler. So he is considered as the premier hotel man of all time. So bakit siya tinawag na premier hotel man? It's because um, hindi lang siya basta nagtayo ng hotel, pero ibinigay niya yung tinatawag na high standard of comfort and convenience. Especially sa mga middle class traveler na kung saan um, yung budget nila sa pagda-travel o yung budget nila sa pagbubuk ng hotel is, higat, is hindi ganun kalaki. So, si Ellsworth Statler, nag-offer siya ng mga affordable prices sa mga turista noong unang panahon. So, next one is the Conrad Hilton. So, Conrad Hilton was the biggest hotel man in the world. Of course, he owned Hilton Corporation. He is also described by the New York Times as the master of hotel finance. So, sa tingin niyo bakit? Bakit siya naging master of hotel finance? It's because he formed the first major chain of American hotels. So, alam naman natin kapag mga chain hotels, madami. Diba? Kung baga sa franchise, madami. Iba't ibang bansa, merong Hilton Hotel. So, that is Mr. Conrad Hilton. Next one is Thomas Cook. So, Thomas Cook is recognized as the first professional travel agent. So, siya po yung na-mention natin kanina na meron siyang first excursion trip between um, Leicester and Loughborough. Okay? So, he is the founder of the world's first travel agency. Okay? So, yung travel agency na nauso ngayon, so, siya po yung founder noon. Okay? And Cook Tour used to refer to a tour that goes to many places and stops briefly at each place. Okay, so yun po si Mr. Thomas Cook. So next one is Howard Deering Johnson. So he was the pioneer of brand leveraging. He was one of the first to introduce franchising in 1930. So ibig sabihin ng um, brand leveraging, kumbaga, isa siya sa mga tao na kung saan ini-introduce niya, okay, yung tinatawag na franchising. Kasi syempre, kapag franchising, most likely, um, lumalago yung business, pwede kang mag-put up ng mga hotels, yung brand mo mas makikilala, hindi lang sa sarili mong bansa, kundi sa iba't ibang bansa. So, next one is J. Willard or Willard Marriott. Okay? So, John Willard Marriott is the founder of the Marriott Corporation, which has the continued to be an important asset in the hospitality industry. So, even here in the Philippines, may Marriott Hotel and even sa iba't ibang bansa. So, parang almost similar sila ni Hilton Hotels. Ayan. So, the next one is si Ray Kroc. So, if you are a fan of eating um, McDonald products, so, dapat kilala nyo po si Ray Kroc. So, Ray Kroc has been the most financially successful of all hospitality entrepreneurs. He has founded um, the McDonald's Corporation, a multi-billion dollar industry. Pero sa mga hindi po nakakaalam, if ever you have a time, you can watch um, his movie, Yung The Founder. 
Okay, so if you have time, please watch the movie The Founder. Mas makikilala nyo kung sino si Ray Kroc. So kasi si Ray Kroc, um, he is an American businessman. So parang all throughout yung journey niya, nare-reject siya, hindi siya nagiging successful. Not until nakilala niya po si McDonald's brother. Okay, yung dalawang magkapatid na McDonald's brother. So in that case, tinulungan niya, okay, yung magkapatid na yon. And most likely dahil hindi masyadong nagte ng risk yung dalawang magkapatid, okay? So siya po yung nanguna. So kumbaga si Ray Kroc, um nagkaroon ng instances na dahil nga tinulungan niya yung magkapatid, okay? At dahil medyo hindi nagiging maayos yung business, um, humihina yung sales. So kaysa isara yung McDonald's binili niya for 2.7 million dollars. Binili niya. But unfortunately, after niyang binili yon at gumana yung mga strategy niya at mga formulation niya sa McDonald's, eventually, he began to take credit for its birth. Okay? Pero hindi talaga siya yung nagtatag ng McDonald's. Okay? So, ang nagtayo ng McDonald's talaga is yung dalawang magkapatid. And eventually, siya lang yung nagpatuloy. Okay, so please watch The Founder if you have time. You can watch it sa Netflix at if ever, pwede nyo rin siyang i-download. Ayan, next one is Isador Sharp. So he is the first, ayan, or the founder of Four Seasons Regent Hotels. Okay, so he is a Canadian. Okay, na siya po ang nagmamayari ng mga world's largest hotel chain in a multi-million dollar global hotel empire. So, Four Seasons na mention na natin yan kanina, isa rin sa mga kilalang hotels around the world. And the last one is Miss Ruth Fertel. So, above all, puro mga hotel chains yung napag-uusapan natin, Ruth Fertel was the founder of Chris Steakhouse. So, si Ruth Fertel naman po is isang restaurateur na nagmamayari ng mga steakhouse around United States. Okay? So, he is the most successful woman restaurateur at present as well. So, those are the pioneers of tourism and hospitality industry. So, aside from that, let's try to take advantage, ano? Ano ba yung mga naging origins ng tourism and hospitality in the Philippines? Now, in the Philippine setting naman tayo. So, during the origins of the two industries, so, nagkaroon na po ng tinatawag natin na Pan-American Airway Air Clippers. Okay? So, ito po yung mga sinakyaan, okay? mga sinakyan ng mga Americans noong unang panahon and they were able to reach Manila after two weeks on board. Okay? So, before we proceed sa picture, nauso rin po yung tinatawag na colorroom even noong unang panahon pa. So, ngayon, uso pa rin yan. Pag sinabi nating colorroom, ito po yung mga illegal tour handling and illegal use of private vehicles for public use. Ibig sabihin, ito po yung mga sasakyan na ginagamit natin for public purposes, pero hindi registrado. Okay? Hindi po registrado, walang lisensya, yung plaka, ano na, hindi na siya maayos. So, illegal, ibig sabihin lang natin doon. Okay? So, next, ayan. Ito po yung itsura niya ng Pan-American Airways. Ayan. So, next one, ayan. We also have only few tourist attractions and destination na naging famous noong araw. So, we have Manila, Pagsanhan Falls, Laguna Lake Tour, Tagaytay, Taal Volcano, Mount Mayon, Legazpi City, Baguio City, Banawe Rice Terraces, Cebu City, Sambuanga City as well. So, we also have the different associations okay, na nakilala noong unang panahon. So, we have the Philippine Tourist and Travel Association or the what we call PTTA. So, it is the first tourism and hospitality associations in the Philippines. So, ang ginawa po niyan is yung government, okay, so, pinondohan niya itong association na to para i-promote yung ating tourism and hospitality sa Pilipinas. So, aside from that, we also have the National Tourism Organization o kilala na po siya bilang Department of Tourism ngayon. So, the Department of Tourism, of course, sila po yung in-charge 
to make plans and programs para ma-insure natin yung pleasant and hospitable entry and stay and departure of the tourists as well. So, si DOT siya po yung namamahala ng ating tourism industry. So, kung paano ibabangon yung turismo, lalo na ngayon sa panahon ng pandemya. So, sila po yung in charge with regards to that. So, the last topic is about the factors that favor the growth of tourism and hospitality. So, ano po ba yung mga factors na dapat natin i-consider sa paglago, okay, ng turismo at ng hospitality industry sa bansa natin? So, first one is the rising disposable income for large sections of the population. So, of course, dahil nga po karamihan is may trabaho, employed na, so, ibig sabihin, meron tayong mga extra pera. Okay? Meron tayong mga extra money to travel. Pero, syempre, if you have a large family, baka hindi mo pa kaya kasi ang dami mong expenses, di ba? So, most likely, if you have an extra income, um, we encourage you to travel, di ba? To explore the world in case na yun yung interest mo sa Buhay. Number two is growth in the number of retired persons who have the desire and the energy to travel. So, yung mga retirees, yung mga lolo't lolo ninyo, yung mga retired military people, ini-enjoy na lang nila yung buhay nila sa pagta-travel. Siyempre, kung kaya pa nila, no, kung may energy pa sila. So, increase in discretionary time. So, of course, even um, kapag may mga holidays, Diba? Kapag may mga holidays, mga long weekends So, yun yung time natin to travel and explore iba't ibang destinations So, greater mobility of the population So, in this case, dahil po nagiging maayos na yung mga transportation services okay? So, yung mga tao nagkakaroon na rin ng mga travel opportunities okay? In that way, nalilesen natin yung stress and pressure sa syudad Okay? So, kumbaga, parang sabi nga natin, short escapade. Alis muna tayo sa city, punta muna tayo sa mga provinces or mag-travel muna tayo. So, number five, growth in the number of singles. So, ngayon, maraming tao na they prefer to live alone kasi mas marami silang free time, mas flexible yung time nila. Unlike sa mga couples nowadays na, yun nga, most likely yung ibang couples gusto nila sila at sila lang yung magkasama. So, in this case, um, kapag single ka at nag-travel ka as an individual, most likely, mas na-explore mo yung mundo. Okay? Mas mar natututo ka na makipag-socialize. So, number six, greater credit availability through credit cards and bank loans. So, ngayon, dahil nga nauso na yung mga credit cards, pwede ka nang magpabook ng hotel using your credit cards. Ayan, you can even loan. Pwede kang mag-loan for you to travel, but you have to see to it na mababayaran mo. Kasi pag credit card, utang po yun. Diba? Utang natin yun sa, sa banko. We also have higher educational levels. Ayan. Some people um, travel to other country para mag-aral. Doon sila magka-college, doon sila magma-masteral degree. And most likely, yung mga ibang tao... They want to know yung mga foreign cultures as well. So, natututo din tayo kapag pupunta tayo sa ibang bansa. Number eight, the growth of cities. Ayan, so, ibig sabihin lang dito, because of the industrial revolution, marami ng mga tao ang nakatira sa syudad. Okay? Kesa sa mga tao nakatira sa mga rural areas. So, nagiging congested kasi, di ba, dumadami yung population sa, sa city. So, in that case, pag madami yung population, mas malaki yung tendency na maraming mag-dine in sa mga restaurants, sa mga hotels, at iba pang mga destination. So, simplification of travel through the package tour. So, syempre, nagiging um, less hassle na kasi yung mga travel agencies, nag-offer na po sila ng package tour na kung saan nakaplano na, naka-arrange na, at included na lahat ng kailangan mo sa pagta-travel mo. Number 10 is the growth of multinational businesses. So, syempre, um, lumalaki yung mga businesses na yan, nagiging maunlad, nakikilala all over the world. And in that case, nagkakaroon lalo ng interest yung mga tao para ma-explore yung mga kilalang businesses na ito. So, modern transportation technology. So, as mentioned before, 
Um, due to technological advances, mas nagiging mabilis na yung pagta-travel natin. Okay? Meron na tayong pagpipilian kung gusto natin mas less expensive, kung gusto natin na mas um, comfortable tayo. For example, sa isang um, airplane, sa mga airlines, pwede kang mag-book ng economy, pwede naman na business class. So, pag business class, most likely mas uh, magiging comfortable ka sa pagta-travel kasi iba yung service na ibibigay sa'yo. And syempre, yung business class, usually ina-avail ng mga mayayamang tao yan kapag pupunta sila sa ibang bansa. Okay, mahaba yung travel duration. Twelve, shift in values. So, syempre, um, kapag tayo is nagta-travel, we value um, the experience more than the material possession. Kasi syempre, yung mga material na bagay na yan, pwede naman natin bilhin kahit kailan. Diba? Pwede naman natin orderin yan kahit hindi tayo umalis. But as we travel, yung experience na nakikreate natin, diba? Mas kakaiba yun. Iba yung effect. Na experience mo first time na makaranas ng snow sa ibang bansa. So, hindi naman mapapalitan yun ng kung anumang material na, na bagay. So, para it is more on a deep expression sa sarili natin. And number 13, advances in communication. So, syempre, um, ngayon, pag nag-travel ka, most likely, hindi lang naman yan parang um, sasarilihin mo lang. Usually, you'll, you'll get to travel na pwede ka na mag-vlog, diba? pwede mo nang i-document, pwede mo nang um, i-video yung pagta-travel mo, take photos of it, post it in the social media in that way. Um, pwede mong i-communicate, pwede kang makipag-interact with other people as well. So, number 14, smaller families and changing rules. So, sy syempre, sa ibang bansa, most likely, um, kakaunti lang yung mga anak nila, and they have more free time to get away from family responsibilities. Pero syempre, dito nga sa Philippines, medyo hindi natin napapractice yung family planning. Ang daming mga tao pa rin na kahit na hindi na nila kayang buhayin yung mga anak nila, is patuloy pa rin, okay, na um, nag-aanak. So syempre, if we have smaller families, mas may kaya natin, okay? Mas kaya natin na mag-travel. Mas kaya natin na paglaanan ng oras at ng pera kung saan man natin gusto pumunta. Okay? So, that's the end of our presentation. Thank you so much for listening in our discussion. I hope that you will watch the part 1 as well as this part so you can um, assess if you ever learn something about our discussion. So, thank you so much for listening and have a nice day.